Hey friends, my name is Yi, and you're watching Yi Makes It Easy. Welcome to a new video for IGCSE at Matt and today we have questions for rates of change. And these questions are from Exam Solutions, so I'll link their video or their PDF down below in the description. And before we get into it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on any future videos. And we'll move on with question 1. A vase with a circular cross section is shown in figure 2, right here, and the water is flowing into the vase. And when the depth of the water is HCM, this one right here, the, the, the volume of the water, with, uh, represented as VCM cubed, is given by this equation right here. And the water flows into the vase at a constant rate of 80 pi cm cubed per second. Find the rate of change of the depth of the water in cm um, per second when the height or like the depth is 6 cm. So we can deduce some information from, that, um, from that, um, the question. So this one right here is quite important. The water flows into the vase at a constant rate of 80 pi cm cubed per second. And we know that this unit right here, this unit, cm cubed, it represents the volume. And we also know that because the, the, the water flows into the vase, so we know that the volume with respect to time, dv over dt, will be equal to 80 pi and like cm cubed per second. So we have to find the rate of change of depth, which is dh, over dt equals, we can do dh over dv times by dv over dt, right? Because you can just cancel these out to result in dh and dt. So we, we already have this dv over dt value right here, which is from the title, from the question, 80 pi. So now we have to find dh over dv. So to do that, we, have to, we need to use a formula which has v and h, which is given in the question. So v equals 4 pi h, brackets h plus 4. We can expand the bracket to be v equals 4 pi h squared, plus 16 pi h. And to differentiate it, you can just differentiate v with respect to h. So it will be dv over dh equals, you put the power down and times by the coefficient, 8 pi h, plus the, this cancel out, so it will be 16 pi. So we have to find the rate of change of depth of the water when h equals 6 cm, sorry, at 6. So the condition where h is equal to 6, h, oops, yeah, h is equal to 6 cm, so it will be 8 pi times by 6, plus 16 pi, because I just substituted h by 6 right here. Then we can expand the bracket and expand everything out to become 64 pi. So, so we know that we have we need to find dh over dv and we're given dv over dh. So dv over dh equals 64 pi. We can just reciprocal both sides to become dh over dv equals 1 over 64 pi, like just like 1 over the both sides. So so we have dh over dv already, so which is 1 over 64 pi, times by dv over dt, which is 80 pi. And we can basically just simplify this, 80 pi over 64 pi, the pi cancel out to become 80 over 64, which is 5 over 4 cm per second. So let, me use, let, me use, let me use like a new color, so it's much clearer. So it will be 5 over 4, cm per second and the reason why we use cm not cm cubed or cm squared is because we're finding the depth of the water which is measured in cm like so and question two the diagram shows a container in the form of a right circular cone and the angle between the axis and the slant height alpha where alpha equals 10 inverse 1 over 2 and like initially it's empty then the liquid is added at a rate of 14 cm cubed per minute so we can deduce it to um, dv over dt equals 14. So, and for number one, show that the volume vcm cube of the liquid in the container is um, when the depth is xcm is given by v equals 1 over 12 pi x cube. So we can just notice this part right here first. So let me just draw the triangle, it will be like this, alpha and xcm. And we know that this uh, we are given the value of alpha right here. So alpha equals 10 inverse 1 over 2. And we know that 10 is equal to opposite over adjacent. And we know that this is opposite and this is adjacent. And from the formula, we know that opposite is 1. 
and adjacent is 2. So from here we can deduce that x is equal to 2. And basically x is the same as height in the volume of a cone formula. So x equals 2, which is equal to height. So we have the radius too, like um, the r, like, um, which is this part here, this part. So we can notice that the radius is half the value of x. So we could set r, the, va the, um, the radius, as 1, which is what we're given, equals x over 2, which is 1. So now we have what um, h and r represent in the context of this cone right here, right circular cone. We can substitute into the equation. So let me just prove 1 right here, 1. So we know the volume is v equals a third pi. r in this case is, pi, uh, is x over 2 x over 2 square times by h which is just x. Like so we can expand the bracket to be 1 over 3 pi x square over 4 times by x and we can let me just wrap this out right here we can notice that we can times this 1 over 3 by 1 over 4 to result in 1 over 12 let me just use a new color which will result in 1 over 12 and the pi just remains as pi so 1 over 12 pi x cubed because there's a x squared and x and times together to get x cubed and we've proved this so QED. So for number two, find the rate of change at which the depth of the liquid is increasing at the instant when the depth is 8 cm. So give your answers in cm per minute correct to two decimal place. So we're trying to find the depth, the, in the, like the rate of change of depth, which is x. So we find the x over dt. And we can find it by doing the x over dv, the, like so, times by dv over dt. Because remember, we're given dv over dt right here, on top, here. So we have to find dx over dv when the depth is 8 cm. So we're already given this formula, right? So v, oops. Um, so v equals 1 over 12 pi x cubed. So that means dv over dx, to differentiate v with respect to x, would be 1 over 4 pi x squared. So, and the condition where the depth is 8 cm, so x has to be 8 cm, 8 cm, expand everything out like 1 over 4 times 8 squared times by pi, you will get 16 pi. This is in that cm cubed per second. So, so we're given dv over dx and we need to find dx over dv, so we can just uh, reciprocal it. Now do it here straight away. So dx over dt, dx over dt will be equal to dx over dv, which is 1 over 16 pi. Because we know dv over dx is 16 pi. Times by dv over dt, and as we've seen here, is 14. So times by 14. So, and if you times everything out, you will get a value of 0 0.28 corrected to do two decimal places. So we 0 0.28, the unit, it's the depth, so it's just cm per second. cm per second, like so. And number three, and figure one shows a metal cube which is expanding uniformly as it is heated. And at time t seconds, the length of the cube is like x, x cm and the volume is a v cm cube. Show that dv over dx equals 3 x square. So we know this right here is related to the volume and the length. So we have a formula for the cube, remember it will be v equals x cubed because it's just quite straightforward like x times x times x. Therefore, if you differentiate v with respect to x dv over dx, you just pull the power down, x and the power minus 1, and that's how to prove it. It's quite simple. Qed. Number 2, given that the volume is increasing at a constant rate of 0.048 cm cube per second, find dx over dt when the x, or like the, um, the side length or the length, is equal to 8. So, number 2, it'll be dx over dt. It'll be equal to dx over dv times by dv over dt. So, right? And we know that dv over dx is 3x cubed. Sorry, 3x squared. So, we define them um, when x is equal to 8. So, 3 times 8 squared will be equal to, let me just put my calculator, 3 times 8 squared will be equal to 192, right? 192. And this will be the value when it's dv over dx when x is equal to 8. But in this case, number 2, we have to find dx over dv, which is just reciprocal it. 
So since dv over dx is equal to 192, dx over dv is the, is the reciprocal of it, which would be 1 over 192, and times by dv over dt, which is given 0 0.048. So now you just times 1 over 192 by 0 0.048, which will get you an answer of 2.4 times 10 to the power of minus 4, C, sorry, 2.5 times 10 to the power of minus 4 cm per second like so. And question 3, or C, find the rate of increase of the total surface area of the cube in cm uh, square per second when x is equal to 8. So we can either just use like d, let me just write out d surface area, or you can just write dA over dt. We can either just do dASA over dx times dx over dt, or like dv over dt, but it will be much more difficult. So a better way to do it is do a chain rule three times. So it will be dsa over dv times, sorry, dsa over dx times dx over dv times dv over dt. Because we know that this part is given in part b. So we just have to find this part right here. So we know that surface area is equal to x times x will be equal to x squared, and it's 6 times, so it will be 6x squared. Therefore, dsa over dx will be equal to 12x, and when x is equal to 8 c, uh, 8cm, or 8, 12 times by 8 will be equal to 96. So 96. So we can basically just do dsa over dx is given 96, times by, from, from, from what just now, 1, 1 over 192 times by 0 0.048 from part B. And if you put that into your calculator, you get a final answer of 0 0.024 cm cubed per second. And that's the answer. And we'll move on to the last question. Figure 2 shows the right circular cylind uh, cylindrical metal rod which is expanding as it is heated. And after t seconds, the radius of the rod is xcm and the length is 5xcm, and the cross sectional area is increasing at a constant rate of 0 0.032. So find dx over dt when the radius of the rod is 2cm, giving you answers in three significant figures. So we define dx dt. So dx dt can be calculated by doing dx over dt equals dx over dA times by dA over dt. Because we're given dA over dt from here, the cross-sectional area is increasing at, at, at like this. So we just have to find dx over dA, which is linking the, um, the radius and the area together for the cross-sectional area. Which is quite straightforward because you have the area of a circle. A area equals pi r squared, and in this case r is x, so x squared. Differentiating it, we get dA over dx equals 2 pi x and the condition where you have the radius of the rod is 2 cm so x is 2 therefore dA over dx is 4 pi like so so we can just put it here now so we know that dA over dx is 4 pi and we have to find dx over dA which is the reciprocal of it or like 1 over so it has to be 1 over 4 pi times by dA over dt which is 0 0.032 which is given in the question. So 1 over 4 pi times 0 0.032 will get you an answer of 2.55 um, times, times 10 to the power of minus 3 cm per second because it's just um, the x which is the, the radius. So the answer is 2.55 times 10 to the power of minus 3. In part 2, find the rate of increase of the volume when the rod, uh, of, the, of like the rod when the x is equal to 2. So we have B right here. We have dv over dt. We define dv over dt, and it can be calculated by doing dv over d. We can just look at it here. Dx. We can just do dv over dx times dx over da times da over dt, because you can notice that this part right here is the same as part a. This part, right? So we just have to find dv over dx, which is the area. So we know that the area is equal to the cross-sectional area times by the depth, 
or like the length. So it will be pi x squared times 5x, which is 5 pi x cubed. So differentiating v with respect to x dv over dx will be 15 pi plus pi x cubed x cubed. And you do when x is equal to 2 cm or like 2. Therefore, 2 squared times by 15 will be 60 with a pi. So dv over dx will be 60 pi. So therefore, we can write it here, dv over dt will be equal to dv over dx, which is 60 pi, times by dx over da when x is 2, which is 1 over 4 pi, times by da over dt, which is just given in the question or from part a, 0 0.032. And if you multiply everything out, like 60 pi times 1 over 4 pi, like the pi cancel out, times by 0 0.032, you will get a final answer of 0 0.4848 cm cubed per second. And make sure it's in cube cm cubed because you're finding the rate of change of area, which is in cube. And that's the final answer. And that's it for this question so for rate of change. And I hope you'll find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please leave a like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss on any future videos. And if you have any questions regarding my videos or my website or any comments about my website or my videos, you can comment in the comment section and I'll reply to them. And feel free to check out my social media in the description, for example, LinkedIn or YouTube. And if you need any learning resources or any teaching resources, you can check out my website in the description or you can type it out in your browser at www.emaceasy.com And I hope you find it useful and helpful and I'll see you all in the next video which will be rules and examples for higher derivatives or second derivatives. But until then, stay safe and happy learning.